Hello. Say hello to my subscribers right there. Uh, hey, we we part of the company. We what? We part of that guy right there. It's the best mechanic there. Yeah, and yeah, uh, now he's an influencer in no. YouTube. No. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanic. Okay, what's up my guys? How you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mel. Welcome to the channel. Glad to have you here. If you don't know, today we are working on setback. Now, I know maybe some of you haven't heard of it before. Maybe some of you have. Either way, today I'm going to educate you on setbacks and how to properly use it and how to use it to your advantage. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to start off with a scrap piece of pipe. Any scrap piece of pipe will do. Actually, let me correct myself. Something at least 30 inches long or whatever you can get a good 90 degree bend on, all right? And I want you to take a measurement of that scrap piece of pipe. This one here is measuring out to 34 inches. Okay, try to try to get a scrap piece that's um, you know, a whole number at least, not doesn't have any fraction included into it. Just gonna make it a little harder, all right? But at the end of the day, anything will do. All right, so after we bend this into a perfect 90, okay, we're gonna go ahead and measure the stub and the leg on that 90 by putting it up to a square, you know, flat object to make sure that you're being accurate and precise. We're gonna add the stub and the leg together, okay, and we're gonna subtract it by whatever you started off with to begin with, which on this, we started off with 34 inches, okay? Whatever value we get after we subtract it, that's gonna be our gain for whatever bend you use, okay? And for whatever pipe size you bend it with, okay? That's important, okay? That's for the pipe size and for the bender that you use, all right? So after we get the gain, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know how we're gonna find the setback and what it is how we can use it to our advantage, okay? But the first thing you wanna do is find the gain. Okay, so after you have bent your 90 on that scrap piece of conduit, okay, you wanna go ahead and find the straight edge, okay? Your bender will do, if not anything, you know, flat will do, all right? Just to get an accurate measurement so you can put it up against it. And we're gonna go ahead and measure our stub. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and measure our leg, all right? So let's get this measurement here, not forgetting that we started off with 34 inches, okay, to begin with. Now, if you can see here, I'm gonna put it right up against there and I'm gonna go ahead and get my measurement, all right? Now, if you can just give me one minute here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to zoom in. Okay, so if you can see, I have roughly 15 and a quarter. All right, now I know you probably can't see it that well, but that's what I have here on one side. Now let's go ahead and measure the other side, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. 15 and a quarter, right? Now we can actually turn the conduit the other way so that we can measure the leg side. All right, well, let's see if I can actually back this up a little bit here so you can actually see it better and you can actually see the measurement. Okay, so on the other side, over here, let's see what we have exactly. Okay, so we have 22 inches, and not sure if you can see that, 22 inches. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take both of those values, okay, and we're gonna go ahead and add them up. All right, so you can see here, we're gonna go ahead and take those two values and add them up. We had 15 
and 22, okay? So that's going to give us 37 and a quarter, right? 37 and a quarter, okay? Now, the only thing left to do from that is subtract what you originally had on the scrap piece of pipe, okay? What you originally had, let's zoom it up here, which is 34 inches, okay? And now you're gonna subtract it from the 37 and a quarter, okay? Which is gonna give you three and a quarter. So your gain is basically three and a quarter. Three and a quarter inches, okay? For this bender and three quarter pipe, your gain is gonna be three and a quarter, all right? But the whole thing and the whole video that we're, what, we're, what it's all about is finding the setback. And I'm gonna get to that, okay? But this, finding the gain is important for so many different reasons, okay? You only don't need to find the gain to find the setback. It also helps you on calculating, you know, total length as well, you know, which is very important and which is very advantageous when you're actually doing multiple bends, okay? If you watch my multiple bend video, you're gonna actually see that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. So now to find the setback, which is what we're trying to do is, you wanna find the take up for three quarter pipe, because that's what we're, what we're dealing with right now. It's three quarter conduit, okay? So the take up is what for three quarter? It's six, correct? So basically, all we have to do is subtract, okay, subtract six, from our gain, which is gonna give us two and three quarters, okay? Two and three quarters is going to be our setback. Okay, so basically, in a nutshell, if you, su if, if you subtract the take up from the gain, that's gonna give you your setback, okay, for any bender or conduit size, that's gonna give you your setback. That's how you find out the setback, okay? And, and in a minute, I'm gonna give you an example on why it's important to know the setback and how much time you save knowing the setback. Now, this is all in a part of a video that I'm gonna do on showing you how to chart your bender, how to get all the information you need on your bender, you know, as, as you know, as soon as you step up to the to a, a hand bender or any bender that you never worked with before, you should chart it. And I'm going to show you the steps on how to actually chart a bender. Okay, because the first time you step up to a bender, the first day, you should gather all this intel. Okay, which is going to save you so much time after that. After after you gather all that information. Okay, so I'm going to actually come up with a video and I'm gonna show you how to chart your bender, okay? And, and show you all the information that you can get and all the information that you need, okay? Anyhow, let's keep it moving. So our setback, as you can see, for this pipe size and for the conduit bender is gonna be two and three quarters, all right? Now I'm gonna show you why that's important right now. Okay, so this is a new piece of conduit, all right? A new conduit stick. And the example that I wanna show you and I wanna show you how to use the setback correctly is, all right, let's just say we're using a electric bender or hydraulic bender, okay? It doesn't really matter. It could be a hand bender too as well. But let's just say you, you're using a, an electric bender, okay? And you wanna bend a 90, and then you wanna bend a kick right after the 90, okay? This works just as, as well with a hand bender as well. But anyhow, <clears throat> what it is, is it's gonna save you time from having to, you know, when you wanna put a kick in your conduit, it saves time from having to pull it out of the bender, putting it on a flat surface and measuring where it is you want your kick, okay? 
let's just say you want to kick at a certain position, at a certain spot after your 90, after the back of your 90. Well, when you're done bending your 90, you usually take it out the bender and then you measure, you know, wherever it is you want to put it and you make your mark and then you have to put it back in the bender and you got to bend your kick. Okay, with the setback, you no longer have to do that. You can actually put two marks. You can put a mark for your 90, where your 90 stub has to go. And then right after that, you could actually put your mark on where your setback is going to, I mean, where your kick is going to go. Back to back. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so first we're going to start by, let's, let's lay out our conduit. Okay, today I'm not gonna actually, you know, um, you know, bend it in front of you guys, but I'm just gonna show you how to lay it out because that's the most important part. So let's uh, let's lay it out. So I wanna, let's just say I want a, a a 12 inch stub. Okay, we're gonna do a 12 inch stub. I'm gonna mark it here. Okay. Let me mark that there, let me grab my pencil. Okay, as you can see it, my 12 inch stub will go right here, okay? This is where my arrow will go, okay? Now, for the sake of the video, this is my 12 inch, this is where my arrow's gonna go and I'm gonna actually bend my 90, okay? Let me just put that all the way around. Bend that all the way around. Okay. Now, I, let's just say that after I'm done bending my 90, from the back of my 90 now, from the back of my 90, I want to place a kick 20 inches from the back of my 90. Okay? I can actually lay that out for you right now without having to bend the 90 first because we know the setback. So, from the mark that we just put right here, okay, from this mark, I, we're going to measure 20 inches, okay? We're going to measure 20 inches plus you're going to add the setback, okay? Which is what, my friends? two and three quarters. So we're actually gonna place a mark 22 and three quarters, which takes me to right here. Okay. This is where I want my kick. All right. 20 inches from the back of my 90. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bend this 90, okay? And then get back to you and we'll measure, we're gonna measure from the back of the 90 to where this mark is, right here. Okay, I'm gonna put a K on it because this is gonna be where my kick is going to be, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and bend the 90 first, give me two seconds and then we'll measure to see where we land at, okay? Give me one second. Okay, so now we are back. I already bent the 90. Okay, I have it up against the bender, a flat surface. Now, if you just give me one minute, I'm gonna take you over to the measurement. Okay. Okay, good. So now, we have the flat surface here. I have it up against it. And let me fix my ruler so that you can see it's at 20 inches, give or, give or take maybe an eighth of an inch or so, okay? But you get the point, okay, what I'm saying? So basically, the setback is what you're gonna use for when you want to do kicks, okay, and you want to put the kick in a precise location and you know where exactly what the measurement is that you want to put your kick, you know, after your 90, all right? And if you want to bend them back to back, 
you can go ahead and lay out your 90 stub and where you want the kick if you know the setback. It saves you time from having to remove it from your bender, lay it on a flat surface so that you can place your, your mark for the kick. It saves you time for doing that, okay? And all you have to know is the setback, which if you're charting your bender anyhow, you should know the gain already. And all you have to do is if you know the gain and you know the take up, you should know the take up for if you're gonna be bending 90s. So if you know the gain, all you gotta do is subtract the gain from the take up or the take up from the gain, actually, and that's gonna give you the setback, okay? So pretty much, you know, it, it, it's gonna save you so much time when you're working with kicks and 90s. All right, knowing that safe setback is, is so helpful, okay? And um, guys, I got more videos coming along. I got another video coming along with, um, at, with the advanced conduit bending. I'm gonna be adding more videos to the um, advanced conduit bending playlist. I haven't added a video in that playlist for quite some time, but um, I have it in the works. I have the, the um, three-point saddle parallel, three-point saddles um, in advanced conduit bending coming out. Okay, I know that's something that nobody else has really. I haven't seen a video on parallel three-point saddles. And when I mean parallel three-point saddles, I mean that the spacing between them throughout the whole throughout all the, the conduits are spaced evenly throughout the whole bend. Okay, so that's something new. Anyways, we'll get to that when I get there. I'm gonna be bringing those videos out soon. If you have any video requests, actually at the moment, you know, um, this video was requested. Um, I, am I am doing all the requests as much as I possibly can, but um, just give me some time and I'll come out with all the videos, okay? Um, with that said, thanks for subscribing. Please let your co-workers and friends know. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. You know what I mean? And with that, Holmes Law, I'm out.